Hey, welcome back everybody to another episode of the Nonprofit Show. We're really excited that you are joining us today. We have Peter Heller on talking about the three M's for fundraising wins. Okay, Peter, I can't wait to hear what you have to say. Nice to see you. <laughs> Great to see you. You know, Sherry and I talk a lot about fundraising um, on the show, off the show, in the green room. So this is going to be a lot of fun to hear what you have to say. You know, we also have some amazing conversations around our presenting sponsors, and they include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraisers Friday, our new episode shows dedicated to fundraisers and the work that they do just on Fridays, and then your part-time controller. Again, I'm Julia C. Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy, joined today by the amazing Sherry Quam taylor CEO Quam taylor one of our co-hosts. Welcome, Sherry. Good morning. How are you today? Great, great, great. I'm always great. happy when I get to see you. You know, Sherry is based in Chicago. I'm based in Phoenix. We always start our conversation with, what's the weather like? <laughs> I, I feel like it's so relevant with us. And then we added uh, we added Maine to that today with Peter. So we have like all ends of the spectrum. Yeah, it's like crazy. It's crazy that we can be in the same country and have such different environmental experiences. I, I always am amazed by that because I'm always like, isn't everybody else hot? No, no, we're not. We're not, Julia. Rub it in. <laughs> no, I don't think of it as a good thing. I really don't. Well, Peter, as Sherry mentioned, you're coming to us from Maine. Peter Heller, CEO and founder of Heller Fundraising Group. You can find Peter and his team at hellerfundraisinggroup.com. Welcome, my friend. It's great to see you again. I'm so honored to be back here. Peter, you mentioned in the green room that you and your team are celebrating a really important milestone. What is it? Uh, we're now 20 years old as a company, the Heller Fundraising Group, so old that we're uh, going to get some confetti and animate our website. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, we're, we're excited to have been serving nonprofits and, and be a, actually like a viable company for 20 years. Yeah. You know, Peter, I think it's amazing to do anything for 20 years. I don't care what it is, but to serve the nonprofit sector, um, it's even more amazing because it's such hard work. So congratulations. It's really exciting. Yeah. Thank you. I I'm just going to say one interesting thing about that, which is simply when you've been doing something 20 years, you get pretty darn good at it. Mm. Yeah. And it's not like patting myself on the back. It's like, you know, geez, I still wish I was a rock and roll star, but this <laughs> is what I'm good at. So like, you know, we can really help nonprofits quite well with, with the skill set that my myself and my team have. So happy to be talking to you today. And uh, I love that you refer to it as a green room, right? I mean, that's perfect yeah. for money. Yeah. <laughs> so we're set up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my shows. gosh. I never thought of that. Yeah. You're right. That That's OK. Now you're going to have. Yeah. I mean, I know everybody has them in, in performing, but like it's so appropriate yeah. for fundraising. Yeah. I love it. Okay. Well, I'm going to take that to my heart because I agree with you on this and, and I love it. Well, let's get into it because you've got three M's and this really is kind of the, the, the point with which we should be approaching all of our work. You boil it down. Key number one mindset. This is not what I thought you would have said. Yeah. So let me just uh, do the big reveal. The three M's are mindset message and method. So okay. mindset is really the thing that anchors everything. And in fact, Julia, uh, when we met a bunch of months ago and we talked about nonprofit limiting beliefs and how they affect uh, mm -hmm. fundraising, and, and uh, I think we called it nonprofit self-esteem. Self-esteem. Yeah, mm -hmm. that really uh, relates to mindset because what we're talking about is, let's face it, the work of nonprofits is really difficult whether you're a new organization that just has an idea that you've come up with or you've been doing the same thing for decades you're pushing from the land of no into the land of hopefully yes and to mm. get there you have to overcome uh other people's limiting beliefs negative uh interpretations of things and your own internal limiting beliefs so it's really important that uh you find ways to go about 
uh, counteracting those? You know, I actually was excited to see that this was the first M. Um, Peter, I, I don't have 20 years, I have 12 or 13 here. <laughs> I will tell you that this mindset piece in fundraising has become more and more important over the years because um, it, as I myself invested in coaches and realized, man, I, I, a lot of this work is mindset work and that, that then helped my own business grow. <laughs> It's seeing those characteristics in people I was coaching and fundraising. And so it's, I, I feel like I can't bring up that topic real early because it feels a little woo, but uh, man, mindset is 90% of it in, it, in my opinion. So I, I, I'm picking up what you're putting down on, on that front. Yeah. So let me say a couple more things about it. One is that um, I actually, uh, to your point, um, I actually, introduced mindset at the end of a really, really important call with a client last week when we were delivering a feasibility study on their $20 million campaign, which actually we said you can't do it unless you turn it into a $100 million campaign for a whole lot of different reasons, um, <laughs> make it comprehensive and all kinds of things because people just weren't getting this little piece of it. And, and at the end, I actually said, okay, I want to say one more thing. It's going to sound kind of woo-woo, but I'm going to say it. And it's that you've got to take the beliefs that your donors don't want to hear this. You don't want to do it. You know, it's not possible. You've got to take that out of your own minds when you're communicating with people so that you can have a really positive um, trajectory of where you're going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So good. And um, I actually, the other thing I wanted to say is I want to give a really tangible example of how mindset uh, works and is important. Um, and a lot of this really uh, crystallized for me uh, during the pandemic. And during the pandemic, I started thinking about, okay, there was the Great Recession of 2007, 2008, 2009. Mm -hmm. And I look back at the Giving USA data. And uh, for those of you who don't know, the Giving USA data shows how much money is given away by people and companies and foundations and bequests in the U.S. every year. In the Great Recession, it went down hundreds of millions of dollars. So it was, it was at the $200 billion mark above that. Um, and it did go down. Usually it goes up every year. However, it did not go down from 200 something billion to zero. Right. And that's the really important point for mindset is that the nonprofits that woke up in the morning during the Great Recession and were like, holy smokes, there's still a world that needs our help in however mm -hmm. way we define helping. We're going to keep getting up in the morning and doing our job and sharing that with mm -hmm. the message, which we'll get to in a minute. Mm -hmm. Using best fundraising practices, they mm -hmm. kept raising money. Yeah. So it didn't go to zero. That means if you keep your mindset strong, you can keep raising money. Mm -hmm. And same thing happened in the pandemic. I'm not saying it was an easy time. I'm not saying like, any of that, but nonprofits raised millions and millions of dollars yeah. during both of those time periods. Yeah. And the pandemic is a perfect example because quickly we heard, we can't ask right now because of the pandemic. Right. It, it, you know, our clients probably both got, got some of the largest gifts of their of their lives. And so mm -hmm. um, th these are these invisible scripts that I feel that we have in the sector that that really influence our mindset. So um, mm -hmm. I, I, I see that. Yeah. You know, Peter, when we first had you on the nonprofit show, um, you you did use that really interesting description of self-esteem. Mm -hmm. And I have real I've never heard anyone say that before and and it it really dovetails obviously into mindset but this concept that we are worth it that we are a great investment that we are a great vehicle for so many of our donor investors no matter the size if they're small if they're large whatever demographic they come from and uh so i think that you know is is really the foundation for me when i hear this word mindset we hear mindset so much i mean Heck, yesterday we had on a guest um, that spoke about mindset and technology, hmm. right? I mean, so we're bandying this about quite a bit, but to break it down, 
um, to what you're we're, what we're talking about with fundraising, I think is really critical. And I, I really appreciate you kind of laying that foundation for us, Peter. Really interesting. Now I got to ask you, you know, being in this profession for 20 years, how quickly did you observe that it was mindset from the day from the <laughs> day one, or is this something that you've come to I, follow? You know, I'm a slow learner. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know when, you know, uh, it's just having a lot of experiences over the, all, over the years. Um, I'd also say, you know, I've been influenced by a lot of different people. Um, one that comes to mind now uh, is Lynn Twist, who wrote The Soul of Money, um, mm -hmm. took her fundraising workshop a whole bunch of years ago, was really inspired by her positive attitude and kind of put my own flavor on that. But I just, you know, I've always been, I, I worked at Columbia University for 10 years prior to starting my business. And, I, you know, I was kind of a outlier there, like, come on. I mean, we're Columbia University, but still you can do better. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I yeah. tell, you know, and, and I'll just, and I think we, we spoke about that, uh, Julia, the last time is that, you know, the self-esteem thing connects to mindset in that I don't care where you work or how great the organization is. Every organization and the people at it have some internal negative language that they're talking to themselves. So that's, you know, the, the bottom line on mindset is that, I mean, come on, if you don't think your nonprofit is work that either pack up and go home, quit and get another job or just close up the nonprofit because there's enough other things that are, are worthwhile. So like, yeah. get, get with the program. I, I love, I appreciate the tough talk. I really do. I think it's, mm -hmm. um, I think it's really important. So we've got mindset. We've got an idea that we're worth it. We're talking ourselves up in the office, outside the office. We're looking in the mirror saying, you know, go get them. We're going to do this. Key number two is message. What does that look like? Okay. Message in some ways is really simple, <laughs> but there are a few details to it. I want to go over. So, the first thing with message is you want to take that positive mindset and communicate it to your community and your donor audience. So when we work with clients at the non at the Heller fundraising group, we always suggest the following thing. And this is, this is kind of like a secret sauce, but I'm not afraid to <laughs> drop it on us today <laughs> here. <laughs> uh, uh, let people know because there's a lot to, um, taking the secret sauce and actually turning it into something. The most important thing, once you have your, like, you got your mindset all together, is you want to tell a story about the future of your community that's a positive story about how the future is going to be even stronger. Mm. Okay. The future of your community is going to be even stronger Your nonprofit is simply the catalyst or the vehicle to do that. The, the problem that many nonprofits have is that they make themselves the hero of the story or the center of the story. The center of the story is really that community. If you're a social service organization, it's the people that you're serving, you know, in your neighborhood. If you're, a, um, you know, the Metropolitan Opera in New York. It's the people who love opera, whether they're coming into uh, the building or they're seeing it remotely. If, if you know, if you're an environmental group that's uh, national or international in scope, the community is, you know, the, the, the people who care about that, the environment that you're saving. You have to talk about how your work is going to make that stronger. Mm -hmm. So, Sherry, do you see people doing this or not, or missing this? this key piece? Uh, I do see people missing this. Um, yeah. You know, oftentimes, and, and sometimes I'll tell uh, my clients, like, like I get it. You, I know you're the ones doing the hard work day to day. Um, but but we that can't be the drum that we're beating. Mm -hmm. um, and, and sometimes I feel, I mean, I don't know, Peter, with you, I feel like people just haven't thought of it that way. And it's a little like, oh, I never, I just, we, 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 we could talk that way too. Like it's a, it's a, well, we just have our heads down working, um, you know, and so it's just totally. kind of an aha moment. Exactly. Um, that's how I was going to describe it is that uh, one of the reasons 
we usually bring an external writer to help nonprofits with a, uh, a case for support if it's a capital campaign, which is a lot of the work that we do. Um, because the internal folks, just like Sherry said, they're, they just haven't thought like this. Yeah. And most of the time, it's not that complicated to, to change the perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, Peter, you're speaking my language with the case for support objectivity is the most critical critical thing because we're, we're just we're just heads down uh i you know i need that for my my own business or um so the objectivity of having an outside expert writing your case for support man it's a game changer yeah so we also find so i i kind of think about the message a little bit as if you were uh writing a script for a movie now, mm. I've studied this a bit. I'm totally not an expert, but uh, I've studied it enough to be dangerous, I guess. What that, that's what it is. 20 years of danger. <laughs> if, if you think about the story of any movie, regardless of the genre, the characters in that movie have obstacles that they come up against mm -hmm. in, in order to for the story to evolve. It's never like a rom-com. It's never like a joke, and then they fall in love, and it's over, right? There's always things that get in the way. So, and, and if you look at an even more detailed uh, view, if you look at every single scene, a well-written movie, every scene has an obstacle that, mm -hmm. you know, usually, hey, you want to go to dinner? It's usually not great. There's like, oh, I'm busy. I'm like, so, <laughs> and then they break through to, yes, I'm going to go to dinner or no, I'm not going to go to dinner. Uh -huh. so yeah. it's, it's the same thing when you're sharing that message, whether it's specifically in a uh, more formal case for support document for a multi-million dollar campaign, or it's simply your email, you know, end of year appeal messaging. It's what is a, the roadblock that you can put up that says, you know, like, um, you know, our community in this neighborhood is amazing. However, the people are facing this challenge. Mm -hmm. Boom. Um, our nonprofit, you know, once we raise this, you know, fund or whatever, it's it's going to be able to serve this community even better to overcome these obstacles. It's a, you know, there's a lot of different ways to do it, but you can also do it with a positive frame. It's like, you know, this is where the community's at now. The community could get here, but it, they need these services or programs and money, and the money to do it is here. Mm -hmm. So as long as you've got a, you're, you're rooted or anchored in that positive message about the future of your community being even stronger, you can do it in a number of different ways. You know, I love this. And I think it's a really interesting uh, approach because I, I think, um, and we might have lost Sherry here, so hopefully she'll be able to get back in. Um, you know, I think that the messaging is oftentimes what we see in front of us, right? And it's so hard to look into the future. And then I think also, as Sherry mentioned, um, we have an, you know, an interesting, um, here she is, uh, we have an, an interesting opportunity to bring back um, the conversation. And Sherry, I was just mentioning that you know, you use the phrase, we have our heads down and we're doing our work. And it's really hard to look into the future. It's really hard to see how we connect to other nonprofits, to other issues. Um, but I think that this message is really key because I think it helps funders and stakeholders buy in more to what you're doing. When they can see your work is going to link to other things that are going on, um, I think that's a win for everybody. And I, I think it's something we forget. We, we just think about our own nonprofit, right? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe our sector, but we don't really look about how we can be collaborative, if not in reality and spirit, right? With, with other organizations. So mm -hmm. I, I really appreciate you bringing this up. I think it's um, really, really strong. Okay, let's go on to key number three, method. Because this is one of those things um, what we're doing, how we're doing it. Talk to us about this, Peter. Great, I will. Um, 
There was one other thought on message. Oh, it's simply, and this relates to mindset and message and, and method is like, let's be honest, like changing your perspective and, and doing some of this work, it's not always easy. And, you know, we all have our limits. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is, you know, there are limits to what I'm able to do in various ways. There's limits to what the actual individual staff members and board members at a nonprofit can do and conceive. So not everybody is capable of, you know, infinite change. Yeah. Uh, and what I mean by that, like, I mean, in practical terms, it comes down to sometimes, you know, we're more, I don't know, you, you know, we're more pushy than the nonprofit is ready to want to be. And we mm -hmm. just have to move on. Mm -hmm. um, most okay, of so, it works out well. <laughs> I love it. So, so when we talk about methodology and method, does everything, does everything have to be the same or can we embrace our own attitudes and our own processes or, or do you think that we need to kind of reframe that as well? I'm not a hundred percent sure what you mean, um, but uh, so can you can you do well, a it, clarifying question uh, answer it, on that? It seems to me that a lot of organizations have a process. You know that hmm. this is the way they fundraise, and so this is what they're going to do, and then they don't step outside the box. They don't get additional training, or they don't get additional help, and generally they're not successful. But they just think they have to try harder. Um, talk to us about what you perceive method is. Like, how is it that we can take our yeah. work and put it into a method? Well, that's a thank you for explaining because it's a great question, uh, and it really relates to that mindset and and taking starting with the mindset, getting a good message, and then what's the, the method that you're going to use? And I remember years ago I gave like an afternoon workshop to uh, I think like twenty. Um, 20 nonprofit leaders on how to do certain things in in fundraising and you know everybody was nodding their heads and then uh, you know and taking a lot of notes and then the leader of the group at the end of this whole long thing she gets up and she says okay now how are we going to raise money and i was like um i think i just kind of missed that. <laughs> <laughs> so um so wow. you're you're absolutely right that if you want to succeed more than you're currently succeeding and people, you can hide a lot of inefficiency behind a multi-million dollar organization that's raising millions of dollars that mm -hmm. isn't reaching its potential. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to work with us, we're going to push you on, on fine tuning your methodology. We're not going to throw anything out because you're probably already doing good work, but let's get really practical for a minute. You, you know, the mindset is really important, perhaps a bit more woo-woo. The message, you got to get crystallized. But then we live in a world where you want to get specific amounts of money into your nonprofit's bank account. And that takes communicating that me me excuse me, message in specific methods. And what are the way, you know, you have to engage with people. You've got online things. You can bring them to your website. You can send emails. You can do social media. You can have galas. You can have other events. Um, you can have little cultivation events. We work, a and all of those are important, as are one-on-one um, -on -one meetings with the most capable individual donors in your community. And that's uh, um, none of these are mutually exclusive, but we work a lot with our clients on those major donors, whether they're in a capital campaign or they just need to uh, raise more money because it's it's kind of like uh, the quickest way to the mother load. <laughs> you know, uh, I didn't mention foundation grants or corporate. Those are all really important. Um, you know, foundations. Um, you have to usually write the letter of inquiry and then you wait and then you get invited to write the grant. And then, you know, it's six mm -hmm. months or more. And it's not like you can get instantaneous money from an individual, but they're not encumbered by 
boards of directors and, and that sort of stuff. So the more that you can um, include individuals in your methodology, um, and I'm talking like every single month you need metrics for the amount of individual donor engagement you're going to do, not just like, oh, let me do it, you know, in the springtime or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and you need to take that message of the future of your community and share it in in each of those methodologies. And uh, actually, last week we we have a have a monthly um, Zoom solicitors brainstorming group. And last week we were actually talking about uh, the annual fundraising calendar. And that, by that we meant, you know, taking something simple like a Google Sheet or an Excel and just mapping out each month of your year what are the activities you're going to do that engage your donor community, including your, your board meetings and other stuff like that. And then seeing whether you've got enough bandwidth to actually do all those things. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And yeah, and let me just tell you right now, if you're like working on the video that you're going to share with your audience, that's going to, you know, the five minute video that's going to explain your nonprofit and everybody in the organization is getting involved in this. It's like, that's not really where you should probably be spending your time. No, no. It's really a, an interesting thing, too, because I think when we talk about method, um, we get so bogged down with everything that has to get done that a lot of times it's easier just to disengage because it's so hard to determine what you have to do when you have to do it and and just get it done and, and start moving through those tasks. So I appreciate you calling out, you know, uh, what's going on. It makes me crazy when I look at really talented fundraisers turning into event planners. It makes me crazy. It's like the most, it's, it's really an obscene amount of time, money, and energy that trashes a team when they could be doing other things and really getting in front of, of decision makers. Um, Wow, for me, it's just such a misplacement of talent. And uh, so it, it's one of those things that you, I, I love your idea of tracking this out for the whole year, which we should be doing anyway. Hello, mm -hmm. it should yeah. be a basic concept. Yeah. And then really, you know, understanding what it's going to take and, and how we're going to work through it. Um, Shuri, this has been fun, hasn't it? It has. It has. I feel like uh, Peter and I need to know each other in a, in, a, in a greater way. So I've enjoyed the conversation. Yeah, it's been really, really amazing. Um, Peter Heller, you know, really been fun to chat with you again. CEO and founder of Heller Fundraising Group. You can find more out about uh, Peter and his team at hellerfundraisinggroup.com. He's got some great uh, video pieces on his site where he interviews and talks with other um, fundraisers and in, and hears their story and talks about certain things um, that are really interesting for anyone that's out there in this space, um, especially bigger picture issues like capital campaigns and, and looking at, at larger um, strategy for bigger events uh, such as capital campaigns or endowments. So, Go to hellerfundraisinggroup.com and learn more about what their work is. Um, Sherry Quam Taylor, always a delight to have you, my friend. Thanks for having me, as always. It's been a lot of fun. You know, we have amazing sponsors, and they include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraisers Friday, and Your Part-Time Controller. These are the folks that really make a difference in so many communities but certainly in the nonprofit community. Um, we've had a lot of comments that have come in through um, the day, through the morning. Um, and so Peter, one of them, I'm going to shout out, give a shout out to one of our viewers. It says, mindset is huge. Great reminder. So. <laughs> Thanks. And by the way, anybody can email me at peter at hellerfundraisinggroup.com. Happy to talk to anybody. Okay, great. Awesome. Well, as we end each and every episode of The Nonprofit Show, we leave with this message. It's pretty simple, but it's also pretty complicated. And it goes like this, to stay well so you can do well. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you again.